This is Detective Zachariah Blanchard, NYPD, acting on behalf of Prince Poor PD via the United States government. Investigation of the Princeport Mist has begun upon its lifting 48 hours into what reporters from the Associated Press, myself, law enforcement, and active duty military service members have now uncovered as the most tragic single day loss of American life since the Civil War. On October 27th, 2027 at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the town of Princeport, South Carolina witnessed and endured a previously undocumented meteorological phenomena, moving from the shores of the Atlantic waters into the small fishing town beside it. I emphasize the town witnessed it to note no witnesses remain to be seen. A sand-colored, foul-smelling, extremely fine mist that spread in a circular pattern from a point two miles off the coastline and upon initial investigation has essentially wiped out any organic life and material without a trace. Members of the National Guard and intelligence agencies have ruled out terrorist or military bioweapon attack due to its near instantaneous appearance on Doppler radar. Nonetheless, a national emergency was called. The state of South Carolina has essentially been put into a form of martial law as law enforcement officials and active duty military service members have flooded this small, empty, forgettable town in hopes of uncovering what has happened to the near 5,500 missing persons now presumed dead. Presumed as to this point, little to no signs of anyone having existed spared the first piece of evidence mentioned in this recording have been found. It just doesn't make any goddamn sense. <sighs> Princeport, South Carolina is a quiet place where people might go to forget about it all, as you might say. Not often marked as a town on actual maps or even a location on some navigation apps due to its proximity to protected forest, wetland, and beach areas, uh, and of course several more Bible Belt tourist areas. Recently, Princeport was flooded with transplants from the Northeast due to its low property prices, low taxes, and low general cost of living, and a few years a town known for those surrounding it, barely boasting a functional highway system, was flooded with well over 3,000 new residents in a little over a year, all of whom are, as of today, unaccounted for upon the lifting of this mist. The town stands more quiet than it ever bargained for now. Nothing remains but concrete and rebar. There isn't a goddamn tree or blade of grass in sight. Just pale sand, brown dirt, and empty skies. Ironically enough, I find myself being a transplant here myself. I've been brought in from New York to document the findings in some of these little brown and tan houses that spackle the marshes closest to the incident site. I don't know shit about weather patterns, but I do know most sandstorms are not found fatal, let alone leave nothing behind for a rowdy detective with a focus in the forensic scientists from St. John's up in Queens to investigate. <sighs> Non-living tissue remains have been found here and there, but one place has become the primary point of interest. Despite weathering this mist where other homes have had their bones picked clean, a lone site remained completely untouched. In the back of a cul-de-sac, a somber one-bedroom house is all that stands beside the metal and concrete skeletons as the mist eviscerated the wood and organic materials making the flesh of these homes as well. Upon hazmat investigation, music equipment was found unscathed, 16 khaki jumpsuits littered the floor, decorative tacky paintings depicting empty chairs look into the ocean and live laugh love signs lined the walls. Most importantly, our first piece of forensic evidence was finally discovered. A lone piece of cardboard with a strange, caramel-like fluid dried to it in a bathroom sink was left behind with the message. The super painted over me, a new me moved in, scrawled in Sharpie. Uh, there's clearly more to the message penned on the cardboard. A line ripped off the end, a bleedus, uh, I still can't crack whatever the second part is. I do know that Oblitus is Latin for forgotten. Now the police force is brought in from some neighboring towns and states are looking for the remaining piece, perhaps a last moment message trying to describe the tragedy occurring here, but to be honest I doubt their skills as they write it off to be written in a panic. 
Uh, strokes in the Sharpie show thick and line work that only comes from, as anyone who has written with a fucking Sharpie would know, deliberately writing a message like that, calmly and with ample time. As it's so far our only sign of life, its discovery felt almost intentional. Not to mention the fluid seems to have dried into the sink for almost a week. It's nearly crystallized, and it's extremely hard to remove, making samples damn near impossible to recover in more than trace amounts, but it does date the time of incident to well before the mist was ever even documented. Now, Officer Derek Charlotte and Deputy Ron Hamburg and my makeshift squad, quite possibly the only survivors of the town as they returned to find their families and friends lost to a tan fog while out of state, searched records pointing to the ownership of this home. Recently being rented as an Airbnb belonging to by a, by, a, by, a, by a young musician under a public figure moniker going by Hi, I'm Chris. And investigations will continue in the tenant's belongings, presumably this jumpsuit, USB and XLR microphones, synthesizer, wallet, notebook, 2023 iPhone 15, and 2020 MacBook Pro laptop are being processed and investigated thoroughly as the victim seemed to be residing and recording in this makeshift home for, looks like more than three months. I find it quite fucking curious as to why a smaller northeast-based recording artist would find himself here. He's frankly the youngest fucking Yankee to ever step foot in this town. Uh, there's not much to find inspiring, spare the admittedly tranquil nature scenes. Uh, it's a pretty isolating and damn near eerie place. Now, the whole house was painted in an almost unnaturally nauseating shade of beige. I'd find this place hard to stomach for longer than a week beach vacation or golf outing, let alone to be completely alone here. Uh, nonetheless, the victim has no criminal record, let alone a record with police uh, suspicious activity, spare alone New Jersey speeding ticket from 2014. But regardless, my gut turned in this place. And seeing as there isn't much else left to say about Princeport other than small ranch-style homes cobbled together in record time to account for the mass arrival of wealthy retirees from my neck of the woods, and the construction equipment left behind in the process of cobbling even more, I intend to know this story. <sighs> Is there any correlation to this stay leaving this admittedly eerie place relatively intact? Is there something this victim knew? Upon permission from the victim's family, we'll now be able to see, as we prepare to try and unlock the victim's devices to look into his files this evening. A breach of privacy? Yeah, but who gives a fuck? And maybe our only hope as we continue to search for some truth behind this incident. Or maybe, just maybe, the story we find winds up being told is unimportant, and it's just told out of blind luck.